guys, welcome back, it's Jen, and today I'm gonna to show you how to decorate your very first cake. So I chose this cake as being a good first cake to decorate because there's really a lot of simple techniques that give you a big bang for your buck. The sprinkled brace is great because first of all, you could just do that and it'd be an adorable cake. You just stick a cake topper on top and it's so cute already, just like that. But, you know, when you're learning to frost your cake for this first time, it could be tough to get it smooth or look how you want. But sprinkles are a really easy way to make your cake look adorably frosted, and it's so easy. And the drips are a really good technique to learn and pretty simple as well, and they're super popular. And the piping technique I chose to put on top of the cake is really pretty simple and it's a very common thing to put on top of cupcakes and cake, so it's a good one to start with. So this tutorial is assuming that you know how to bake a cake, stack it, and frost it decently. So if you don't know how to do that, um, check out my tutorials, how to bake a cake and how to frost a cake. So the first thing you need to know is what ingredients and tools you need. I have three separate pictures to show you this. So you're going to be making white chocolate ganache. No worries. It's microwavable. It's so easy. So you're just going to need heavy whipping cream, white baking chips. They kind of look like white, you know, chocolate chips. Um, I highly recommend your deli brand because they are really yummy. They don't taste fake. But if you like something else better, that's fine. And then enough sprinkles to cover your entire cake and then some. Because we're going to kind of be doing a, a scoop and push them on your cake method. <laughs> so it's nice to have a big handful every time to push them on your cake. And then the salt is optional. So a lot of sprinkles that are sold at the stores are kind of assuming you're just going to sprinkle on top of something. So I would look for a bigger bag to save money. So you can go to a bakery or restaurant supply store in your area and you could find a big bag of them pretty inexpensive or I got these on Amazon and just to clarify these actually aren't sprinkles they're quins you can do sprinkles but I highly recommend quins because quins are like small circular flat discs and they really give the most polished look when you're putting them all over your entire cake okay so here are all the tools you need if you want to take a quick screenshot of this. Um, the cookie baking sheet is just for pouring the sprinkles on because you're going to hold your cake over this pan and grab the sprinkles and um, push them on your cake and then they're going to fall back into the pan. It's super messy but you could use something else uh, if you have it. And then the piping bags I prefer 18 inch especially for beginners. It gives you more room to get messy with your frosting but if they don't have 18 inch, 12 inches, fine. So these items are optional, but I recommend, uh, especially for beginners. So first of all, the gloves quickly are just, because I always tend to get food coloring on my hands. <laughs> so, um, that and it's good for the sprinkles, but it's up to you. So the other items are so you could take a cutting board or something else flat, um, and then you put the parchment paper on it, tape it on the back, and you're going to pipe your cupcake swirls um, on the parchment paper. So then you can put them in the freezer or the refrigerator and let them harden. So then you can uh, pick them up with like a spatula or something and place them directly on top of your cake. This is good because you can pick your favorite ones. You don't have to worry about ruining your cake. Um, and you can place them the way you want. Start over again if you have to. And then the cake board is for basically you're going to put that on the parchment paper and kind of make a tracing of it so you can practice making sure you have the right size cupcake swirls to fit around uh, the whole cake. And I'll explain that later. So since this tutorial is how to decorate a cake, you're obviously going to need a frosted cake ready <laughs> to decorate. So if you need any really yummy cake recipes, I've chosen my favorites. That's why I call them the best. Um, the vanilla cake is super moist and fluffy. So good. And a great base for lots of different flavors. And then the chocolate cake's amazing. It's so moist and very chocolatey and yummy. 
but I highly, highly recommend you use my American Crusting Buttercream recipe for this cake. Um, not only because it's super creamy and fluffy and yummy, but also because it's really amazing for decorating. It pipes on really smoothly. It keeps its shape really well. And the crusting part means that the very most outer layer of the buttercream crusts up. Um, so it's dry to the touch after it sits for a little bit and is exposed to air. Now don't worry, you don't taste this when you bite into it. It's very creamy and yummy, but it makes it more difficult for you to accidentally nick your cake. Okay, so let's start decorating the cake, the fun part. So you're gonna take your cake and hold it over these sprinkles and you're just gonna take big handfuls of sprinkles and push them against the cake and the frosting acts like glue. If you're using a crusting buttercream, make sure you do this right after you frost your cake so it doesn't do that crusting over I was talking about. If it does happen, you can just run your spatula over it and kind of scrape off the outermost layer of frosting and then it'll become sticky again. So I purposely did not frost the cake very smoothly, just to show you how you don't have to be good at frosting your cake smoothly. You do have to have a good shape um, because the sprinkles aren't gonna cover up the shape of your cake, <laughs> but they will cover up all the other flaws in the frosting, which is great. So I like to start at the side of top of the cake and really get it right to the edge because that's the hardest part to go back and fill in. Um, so I do that first and then I like to do the very top of the cake and then I like to work my way down the sides. And then when you're done pressing on all the sprinkles, just take a look if there's any holes or anywhere. And if there is a hole, you just simply, you know, pick up the sprinkles and press them against that part. If for some reason it's not sticking to one part, which isn't typical, but you never know, um, you could use corn syrup um, and just kind of brush a little corn syrup on that part and it'll act like glue and the sprinkles will stick to that. Uh, they call corn syrup Mother Nature's glue. So once all the sprinkles are on, now all you have to worry about is getting them off the cake board. So I like to just go around and push all the loose ones off the cake board. But then some of them that are close to cake, I'll just use my spatula and push them into the cake so that they stick. Now, it's totally not necessary, but, and may not be worth the risk if, if you're a beginner. Um, but I like to run my spatula around the cake just to push any spr loose sprinkles in, um, but totally not necessary. So there you go, step one is complete. You now know how to sprinkle a cake. All right, it's time to make our white chocolate ganache. So you're gonna put a cup of chips in a microwave safe bowl, and then you're gonna pour all the cream in, and go ahead and put that in the microwave for one minute and 10 seconds on high. And you're just gonna keep checking this, and until all the chocolate chips are melted, you're just gonna keep putting it at 10 second intervals. And go ahead and make sure you whisk it after every time you check. So I definitely had to put mine back in the microwave for a few more 10 second increments, but now all the chips are melted. So we can go ahead and put our icing color in now. Just do one drop, it goes a really long way. Okay, so that looks good. So we can go ahead and pour it into our bottle. I like to do a test run on a bowl or a Tupperware just to make sure that it's dripping well. So if your drip wasn't coming out well, first you're gonna wanna clean out the top with a toothpick from the top and the inside. And then you can go ahead and put this in the microwave for 10 second intervals until you're sure that you know all the chocolate chips are melted if it doesn't look this consistency that I'm showing you here, maybe you didn't add enough cream. Um, if that's the case, I would just start over. I always find it's easier than, you know, add more, add more chips, add more cream, add more chips, add more cream, and you never get it right. 
on that note, um, also if it's too runny, you probably measured wrong as well. And again, I would just start over. Another way you can warm up your ganache in the bottle is you can fill a cup with hot water and stick it in there. And cautionary tale, if there's any resistance when you squeeze the bottle, don't keep squeezing. The top will come off and ganache will go all over your cake. It's happened to me before. Okay, so let's get started. So you're going to put the bottle at the edge of the cake and you're just going to squeeze until enough comes out where it makes the right length of drip that you want. And then you just move over a little bit and just continue this um, so you're all the way around the cake. So to get the look that it's in the cake picture, um, you're going to want to have a mix of short, medium, long, like varied drips. And the longest one should go about halfway down. And you should never do the same length drip two in a row. So I personally like drips that are closer together, so let me show you that look. So if you make a drip that's too short, you can go over it again. Uh, but if you make a drip that's too long, that's a little harder to come back from, you can put the cake in the freezer, the fridge, the ganache hardens, and then you can try to like crack it off. Um, the only thing is there is a risk of ruining the base of your cake. So that is it. You know how to put a drip on a cake. Step two complete. All right, let's do our final step and put cupcake swirls on top of this cake. Okay, so you can go ahead and add your icing color now. Um, one thing to know is that the frosting will oxidize as it sits, and that means it'll get slightly darker as it sits. So if your frosting color is a little bit lighter than the color on the bottle, that is normal. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and cut the tip off of our piping bag so we can put our piping tip in. I do it a little shorter than normal and then I put it in and then I kind of recut it to size because I hate when I cut them too short and have to throw the bag away. So that's a 2D tip and just to show you if you have a similar tip that'll work for the cupcake swirl as well. And I'm going to use a cup technique to fill up my piping bag here. I only put a, like two spatula fulls of frosting because if we put too much, it'll be hard to pipe. If we do too little, it'll be hard to pipe. So you want the perfect kind of grip. So once you push the frosting to the tip, twist the bag as tight as you can and just position your hand so you can squeeze it well. So assuming you're right-handed, you're going to want to squeeze with the right hand and then you use your left hand to kind of stabilize the bag. I'll give you instructions on this in a minute. I just wanted you to see it first. And I'll teach you on a cupcake first really quick because you might as well learn how to put this on a cupcake too. Let me show you that again in slow motion. So you're going to want your bag straight up and down. Start applying light pressure and slowly move your frosting out in a spiral motion until you get to the edge of the cupcake and then you start to slowly spiral in. And then when you get to the top, you're going to stop putting pressure on the frosting when you get right to the middle and stop pressure here and slowly pull up. And this one I'm going to show in reverse just because I think it's cool. Uh, but who knows? You know, everybody learns differently. Maybe it'll help you out. But at least it will definitely entertain you. So now I'm going to show you how to pipe the cupcake swirls on top of a cake. So if you're a beginner, this is the best way to play it safe. Um, so go ahead and tape that parchment paper on a cutting board or whatever you have. So I put a six inch cake poured down on the parchment paper because I have a six inch cake. And I'm just gonna make little marks with the frosting so that when you pull up the circle, you kind of see where the circle is. This is gonna help you with your cupcake swirl placement on top of your cake. So I usually pipe 
six of these on top of the cake. So first I'm going to start with one and then I'm going to go directly across and then do another one. So now you're going to want to place two cupcake swirls in between those two swirls you already made. So just place two evenly between the two. And then after that, you're going to want to go diagonal from the cupcake swirls you just made. I found this is the best way to assure that your cupcake swirls look evenly placed. And remember as your frosting level lowers in your bag to stop and retwist the bag. So if you like how these turned out, you can go ahead and put them in the refrigerator or in the freezer if you want it to happen quicker. And they will harden and you will be able to um, scrape them off and put them right on top of your cake. If you don't like them, you can just scrape them off and start over. So these have hardened and you can use a spatula or knife or fork, whatever works best for you. It'll keep its shape pretty much. Um, let's see how sturdy those are. So it's really nice because you can put them directly on your cake. This is nice here too because if you made them a little too big, you can really put them to the edge and make space. If you made them a little small, you can push them more in toward the center of the cake uh, to make it space properly. I'm gonna put the pipe the rest directly on the cake so you can see that technique. So you pipe the first swirl anywhere and then you pipe another swirl directly across from that. And then the space you have left over, you pipe two swirls in between the first two swirls that you piped. And then from there you pipe diagonal swirls. So that's for six. So let's say you want to do smaller cupcake swirls. So you want to do eight of them, or maybe you have a bigger cake and you need to fill up the space. Let me show you that. So you pipe the first swirl anywhere, and then you pipe one directly across from that. And then you split um, the space between the first two you piped and place a swirl there and then place another swirl directly across from that. And then you just fill in the spaces in between those. And if you wanna put an odd number of swirls on your cake, you're on your own. <laughs> I, I don't do odd numbers, it's just not worth it. Um, so I'd rather just adjust the size of my swirls to make an even number of swirls. <laughs> and then if you're doing a square or rectangular cake, that one's more straightforward. You pretty much start with putting swirls in all the corners and then you just divide it evenly. So just a few troubleshooting tips here. So if your tip could get clogged from your frosting, you can go ahead and just take a toothpick and just slit it in all the slots and clean it out. If it keeps happening a lot, I would just remix your frosting. Um, but if it just happens occasionally, that's what you can do. You are going to have to refill your frosting. See, when it gets to about that level, it's going to be harder to pipe. So I'd go ahead and fill it up when you get too low. So when you go to refill your bag, you're more likely to get air bubbles the second time around. So you can go ahead and try to avoid these air bubbles as much as you can um, by making sure that the frosting gets to as close to the tip as you can. So I like to tap the cup on the countertop um, to try and get the frosting to go down, but you can end up with these air bubbles and I like to kind of squeeze those out um, and I kind of squeeze them out from, so the air goes out the back of the bag. So if you keep having trouble with air bubbles, you can use a different technique to fill up your uh, piping bag. So you pull out some saran wrap, put a couple scoops of frosting on there, roll it up like a tube, cut off one end, put that open end into your piping bag, 
and you're gonna leave your tube in the bag and squeeze out your frosting from there. Just be careful not to get any saran wrap stuck in your piping tip as you pipe. And sometimes air bubbles are just unavoidable. So what happens when those, uh, when you're piping is just when you hear the air bubble coming out, you just kind of stop moving your piping bag, let it release, and then continue piping. You made your first cake. Congratulations. I hope you make another one with me again soon. And thank you so much for watching.